Hello, I'm Andrew McConville, and I'm a reference librarian at the State Library of Victoria. Behind me is a photograph of the Ross Sea Party. They're on board the ship Aurora. It's January 1917, and they've just been rescued after being stranded in the Antarctic for two years. So let's take a closer look at this photo. That's John King Davis, who led the rescue and was one of the great figures during that era of Antarctic exploration. Next to him is Ernest Shackleton. He accompanied John King Davis to rescue the men. He had sent the party to the Ross Sea to lay stores for his attempt to cross Antarctica. Shackleton had intended to cross the continent from the Weddell Sea through the South Pole to the Ross Sea. His ship endurance was caught in ice and crushed before the crossing could start. He led his men to safety in a remarkable survival story. But Shackleton is not the hero of this story. Beside Shackleton are the seven surviving men of the Ross Sea Party. Their job was to lay stores for Shackleton to pick up during his crossing of the continent. The stores party used the hut at Cape Evans on Ross Island as their base. Their ship Aurora was anchored just offshore, secured by chains. In May 1915, during a ferocious storm, the chains holding Aurora snapped and the ship and the crew were carried away with the ice. Aurora remained trapped in the ice, travelling north for nine months. Finally, the ship broke free and the crew struggled back to New Zealand. Without the ship, the Ross Sea Party was stranded. In September 1915, the Ross Sea Party set out on an epic sled journey to lay stores for Shackleton. They had no idea that Shackleton's attempt to cross the continent had never commenced. So let's go back to our picture. The hero of our story is this fellow, Oscar the Sled Dog. He is not a conventional hero. He was lazy, disobedient and fractious. He really wasn't much use, but the stores party only had four fit dogs. Towards the end of January in 1916, six men from the Ross Sea Party, with their sled dogs Con, Towser, Gunner and Oscar, reached the Beardmore Glacier. They had been on the ice for four months. It was the final stores depot. The men were exhausted and ill. Arnold Spencer Smith was dying Aeneas McIntosh and Victor Haywood had black gums and blue swollen limbs as scurvy took hold. Halfway to the South Pole and 700 kilometres from their base on Ross Island, their companions Ernest Joyce, Ernest Wilde and Dick Richards knew the party had little chance of surviving. Spencer Smith had to be carried on a sled. McIntosh could barely walk and Haywood's health was failing. Joyce summed up the situation. The next enterprise is the long trail back. The dogs are our only hope. Our lives depend on them. Con, the lead dog, had been mighty. Towser and Gunner had also performed grandly, with scarce rations, heavy loads and brutal conditions. But now they were weak, and hungry. That left Oscar. He was lazy and unruly, as Dick Richards described him, an unlovely specimen, a bit shambly, with a low criminal type forehead. Extremely unpopular with the other dogs because of his surly ways and dirty habits. Each day was a desperate battle for survival. In mid-February, they were hit by a ferocious blizzard. Trapped in their tents, 
their rations all but gone. They had to somehow get to their next depot. In Joyce's words, our food lies ahead and death stalks behind. Joyce, Richards, Haywood and the dogs went out into the storm, leaving Wild in the tent to tend to Spencer Smith and Macintosh. Dick Richards observed, the wind was blizzard force, snow whirled everywhere and we staggered in our traces with its force. Hayward was near collapse, visibility was practically zero, and three of the dogs were losing heart. Without the food depot, they would all certainly die. It was at this worst of times that Wayward Oscar decided to step up. Dick Richards wrote, In the crisis, the mass of Oscar just lowered his great head and pulled as he never did when things were going well. He even tried to bite the heels of the dog ahead of him to make him work. When things were going well, he was inclined to be lazy, but he alone gave that extra little strength that enabled us to finally make the depot. They struggled back through the blizzard with food for their companions. On March 9, just short of the rough wooden shelter at Hut Point, Arnold Spencer Smith died. A few weeks later, Towser and Gunner turned on Oscar and savaged him. The men managed to separate the dogs, but Oscar, badly injured, crawled off in the night to find a place to die. The men searched for him, but could find no trace. It was a sad end for the dog that had so recently saved the party. But Oscar was hard to kill. A week later, he reappeared, sore and sorry, but itching for a fight. The party reunited at Cape Evans. It was a grim winter. Con, the fine, intelligent lead dog, died. Ernest Joyce wrote simply, Another pal gone. We buried him on the hill. Dick Richards, who had performed so magnificently, collapsed and was an invalid for the remainder of their stay. Haywood and McIntosh had disappeared, crossing treacherous sea ice, and were never seen again. Just as the men were fearing they would be stranded in the Antarctic for another year, Captain John King Davis manoeuvred Aurora towards Ross Island. The seven survivors of the Ross Sea Party were saved. Ernest Joyce adopted Gunner, while Oscar and Towser went to Wellington Zoo. Oscar didn't get to enjoy his retirement for long. Eighteen months later, in June 1918, he collapsed and died. A post-mortem showed a diseased liver and an enlarged heart, legacy of his hard life in the Antarctic. Many years later, Dick Richards wrote, None of us who made the southern journey will ever forget those faithful friends of the dog world. Con, Gunner, Towser and Oscar. Without them, the party would not have got back. So here we are more than a century later, remembering the dogs who saved the members of the Ross Sea Party, and particularly Oscar. Was Oscar lazy? Maybe. Unpopular? Possibly. With surly ways and dirty habits? Probably. But when the men were slowly dying, facing starvation and the insidious creep of scurvy, with three dogs exhausted, in ferocious weather, deep in the Antarctic and hundreds of kilometres from safety, when all seemed hopeless. It was Oscar who lowered his great head and pulled as he never did when things were going well. <laughs>